Where are you calling from today, Mandy? Atlantic Canada. <laughs> Atlantic Canada. Welcome to the show. What kind of questions do you want to start with? Uh, first, I want to say uh, thank you to you and to Kathy and to Nat and to, to Nash, who, like, what an incredible team. So thank you guys for all your heart space and sharing. It's like just, and I've been so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited. So forgive me. No need to be nervous. Exactly. So um, uh, a couple of questions is, um, okay, uh, my experience so far has been like the school of hard knocks growing up, right? And um, one of my questions is, what is my true, what is my true origins? Interesting. I get this question a lot. And I'm going to ask you, I mean, I'm, I'll tell you the answer, but I'm going to ask you, why is that your first question? Oh, um, because it seems as though I've come to so many different forks in the road, and it's always between esoteric and uh, indigenous uh, Thank you. teaching. You, you answered my question. You've been forced between the esoteric and the indigenous. And it, um, I'm going to put it this way. When I look at your Akashic record, I see a soul that is literally spit into two processes, one that's still battling the lifetime of being a Lemurian and one that's still battling the lifetime of being an Atlantean. The Lemurians were the high spiritual people that turned spiritual uh, spirituality into technology, and the Atlanteans were the technology people that put away their spirit and, and didn't have it as ha have it as much functional in their technology. And both of those lifetimes, you had many divinity path lives where you did the greatest of the great, and now you're here in this frequency of Turtle Island living in the indigenous lands that were supposed to supposed to be the, the leftovers of the Atlantean race, but they weren't. There's nothing that's left over the Atlantean race. There's nothing that's left over the Lemurian race. Nothing for you to base what it is on. So you've been looking at the, the modern esoteric versus the true indigenous. And the true indigenous is what your soul has been been seeking for the last like 6,000 years. So I, I go back to your last lifetime before you, you were living in this life was like in 1819, 1818. Um, and you were living in, we're going to call this Panama at that point in time. Um, you were an indigenous elder, um, like a storyteller and um, some Spanish police officers type thing came to your your village and, and executed you right on the spot with no no judge or court or nothing it was just bang you're done and i see this over and over and over in so many of your indigenous lifetimes that you made it to the level of being the elder and the system of domination came came through and and killed you it's like it's been trying to imprint into you over many thousands of lifetimes to not choose the indigenous again, because if you do, you'll die. And I'm here to tell you now, you should choose the indigenous in every way, shape, and form. And no one with a gun is going to come this time. Oh. Uh -huh. I, I, I mean, I look at hundreds of lifetimes where you made it to the elder to be the most respected of the indigenous tribe and to be, to be, you know, dragged in the streets and killed. You've done that martyrship so many times. You don't need to do it again. That is so true. It's just so true. Thank you. And I think that's where my, my um, fear of going into the next steps of um, being the pipe carrier of what I've been asked uh, right. to do, and um, I've honored many um, ancestors that have come to share teachings with me, such as building like a longhouse and mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. um, incredible work with groups and families, and actually introducing your revocations um, to many. Um, and I've seen so much healing, and it's incredible. And um, I've always been stuck in between the two, the healer path or the, um, you know, smack right in the domination and control. 
mm-hmm. of owning my own business on one side that is completely in domination and control and then wanting the um the true source of my my heart which is the healer's path mm-hmm. it's the healer's path that has the students to support you yeah. okay as much as you are a healer you're a teacher and I think that's something that you need to look into yourself and understand that um, if you get a small select number of students that are are paying you money so that you can teach them to be a, he- a healer just like you within two years, most people take two years to learn how to become a really good healer. And if you take this into your mind and, tra- and look at yourself like the traditional shamans of the past, they would take on a pupil and that pupil would assist them. In today's, today's language, that would mean money so that you may not need to run the business anymore so that they are the ones that are bringing the, 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 the patients to you and from that are learning from you as you begin to heal them. Does this wow. make sense to you? Absolutely. Because... Um, there are so many times where I'll have people just out of the blue that just show up at my place mm-hmm. without me even knowing them. Mm-hmm. And like, while well, they were drawn to there and asking for um, uh, guidance on this or just to have a tea. And it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> so um, I was just, I've been stuck, it seems, for the past two months and um, being pulled back or trying, uh, or let's say the system of trying the claws back in to pull me back into that domination control. And it's been such a fight, um, truly a fight, uh, even to the point of where I started doing the um, uh, colonics or I wanted to start doing the colonics. And just as I started on that path and because I had a real powerful uh, dream where I dreamt in like actually in the whole colon system Mm -hmm. and it was like a whole other dimension of going in there and it was showing me where different things were and what needed to be cleaned out Mm -hmm. and when I started um, taking the steps to start doing the spiritual cleaning of that and the releasing different blockages um, it just happened that the whole septic tank of the house blew (laughs) and then everything else started falling apart for like uh, two months, and it, I think that's where it, it's that sis, the, that fight. And what's one of the best ways of um, of standing in in your standing right. in your trueness and your power and saying the, no, no more. The fact that your septic tank broke, you should know right there that that was an entity. Okay. Did you ever consider that seriously? Yes, yes, I have. It was an entity, and it's still around you, and it's still waiting to suppress you at some further point in time. So the contract raver evocations gave you your sacred space, and the reason stuff started breaking is because you were taking its power away. You were threatening with it. And I think you need to continue on the path of the colonics and continue on the path of the colon cleanses, maybe do a serious spiritual fast where you, you're going to do like a six-day fast and don't take on any clients during that time and um, really become the shaman. I mean, every there shouldn't be more than an hour in your hand where you don't have sage run, a sage stick in your hand or you're using the, the, the eagle feathers or the dove feathers to clean out the energy that's around you. Not that you are being specifically targeted, but in one way you are. You're a healer in an area that doesn't have a lot of healers. Therefore, you're a bright light, and there's a lot of children that are bright lights. So you're going to become a target if you're going to go and heal one of the bright lights that's being fed on by something else. Okay? There is always a spiritual agenda and chess that's going around you, especially in the town that you're in. I, I really sense a whole lot of spiritual agendas between people that are pretend shamans. Um, really pretend shamans and are delving into some idiocracy, dealing with entities that they believe are are tree spirits that are really not, that are just dead people pretending to be something else. And that every now and then they they take over these other people and you need to make sure that 
you have the highest level of spiritual cleanliness internally and externally, and that you take a couple weeks aside where you become the shaman, you use every technique you learn about kicking the entities out, bringing the fairy spirits back into your life, seeing life in full color again, and then looking at your business and understanding your business is not domination and control. Your business is your business. And it's the projection of the system that's saying it's domination and control. It's your choice to make it whatever you want at any point in time. Okay. I want to bring Kathy in here a second and, and talk about some of the, the business blocks that are going on. When I look at your energy, it seems to me that you don't have a clear focus on what it is that you want to achieve out of your business and work. Would you, would you say that's right? I would, I would say, um, yes, uh, I would say that's right as far as not being clear because of the two paths. Mm, okay. Um, how can I put this? I think you need to go back to the beginning in terms of what, what you're thinking that you, you want to achieve or your plan is. It's almost like you have to go back to the drawing board and redo your plan. Um, because by going back to the beginning and writing it down, and even if it's as simple as pros and cons for the, the, the um, alternatives or the avenues you want to go on, it will help you clear your mind and get that clarity that you need. Because to me, it looks like you actually have more than two choices. It seems like there's about five ways that you can go with this or five options. And if you're only seeing sort of two at the moment, then I definitely encourage you to start writing it down because the more you can see it, I think the more you realize that there are quite a few different ways you can go with this. And what I'd say to you is go for the one that seems way out there. Like, <laughs> wow, you know, does that have a snowball's chance of hell of getting anywhere? That's the one that you want. Because for you, out of the box always works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be an interesting time, definitely, because it really is going to be way out there. But, you know, that's the way it goes for you. And I think if, let's say, if you could sit down, you know, at the beginning of the week and try and work on that, a little bit every week for the next few months. By the time you reach the beginning of next year, you'll know exactly what you need to do. And you don't be afraid to tell people what your plan is and ask for help or put it, even if you don't want to ask for help, but you want to hint that they could help you, even do the heavy dropping of hints because people want to help you because they're like, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> you know, you've got a lot more support for that sort of thing um, and your concepts than you realize. And it's because you're so ingenious. That's what attracts people about it. Wow. Mm. And I certainly do feel that there will be financial windfall from this, you know. So it's definitely worth your money, uh, worth your while in terms of cash um, to generate some really good cash in the first half of the year. This is really interesting. Um, may I ask you a question, Kathy? Yes. So the first time that I was in uh, China in regards to business, mm -hmm. I actually had like a complete breakdown uh, after like the third day of being there. And yet it was just because of the complete um, just emotions and a little bit of a culture shock. And at the same time, um, so so wanting to jump in and having other experiences there. Um, but I was scared of it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm about to, uh, well, I'm being pulled to go back and mm -hmm. um, have or start business there also. <laughs> mm -hmm. So... Um, do you see anything in that or any, like, mm, pros, cons, or...? I think I'd definitely go for it, you know. I just think you're in in this, you know, high vibe time, you know, lucky, things you've touched turn to gold kind of phase. I think this time you won't find it as shocking as it was last time. I think also last time you were unlucky with some of the people you encountered were very 
um, traditional, um, not very yielding type of personalities. Yeah. Whereas this time, I think the people you're going to be involved with are much more um, up to date, more, I don't want to use the word westernized, but, you know, more a current and easier to um, get along with um, in terms of just talking, attitudes, um, them understanding that you, you don't like, you know, you're not into everything Chinese. Because <laughs> that is, that is it is tough. <laughs> and it's tough to, to not insult anyone when you say no. <laughs> I don't want that pig's foot. <laughs> yes. Anything with toenail, forget it. <laughs> Yeah, There's not enough soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, and just one other question, which seems quite interesting. When I was there, and you know how, um, of course, like for numbers and numerology is um, quite significant mm -hmm. in Chinese belief, right? Mm -hmm. And they had found that my birth date. Um, which always like the number 18 and just says what just before when um, Andrew was talking about you know the year 1818 that mm -hmm. number 18 is um, always comes up for me mm -hmm. what's the significance of that or is there really a significance to it well one thing about um, uh, Chinese culture is that they, I don't know if the, when they asked you your birth date, if they asked where you were born, because they calculate according to everyone being born in China. So it's exactly. actually different. They don't, I mean, modern day um, readers probably are more adept at interpreting it and adding time difference and um, because it, it's not only the time difference, it's they, they talk about seasons so even their version of numerology is um, seasonal. So for you, what might be winter, for them might be fall. And that makes a big difference in the way they calculate things. So um, number one, I, I would look at, I would take whatever they told you as just a, a vague guide. I wouldn't base a lot on, on the information they no. gave you unless they asked you those questions at the beginning. And the second thing about the 18 is, especially for Chinese, um, or I, well, I'd say mainly Chinese, is anything that has the number eight in it is considered extremely lucky because eight in Chinese we call it ba, and it sounds like the word ba, uh, which, does, <laughs> which means um, uh, get prosperous. Uh, bring abundance, get lots of money, all these interpretations. So anything that has an eight in it is considered extremely lucky. So if you were born with anything with an eight in it, they would take that as a good sign. Um, and in terms of the significance for you, I would just say, look, you know, you, you're actually quite a lucky person anyway, so it's no surprise to me that you have an eight in your birth date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure if I would hold more significance than that in it, <laughs> but anyone with an eight is good. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. You're so awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Mandy, Mandy, I got a, I got a question for you. What kind of job business are you going to open in China? Um, I'm looking to where it's what I call is a one heart nation, mm -hmm. and that is dealing with. Um, uh, of all beliefs coming into one with um, not just a specific teaching, but where people can find many different teachings, but find the teaching or a technique or a tool that would help them along their path. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to discover that China is very, very open to that. Even, even a lot of my material has made it and dated deep into deep into those areas. And what you're going to discover is their culture is very, very different. Um, you're going to be turned in this term of uh, Sifu, a master of what it is, because they have a different family 
growth pattern. And when you were talking about the, the when we were talking about the shamantic side before, where you live in now has a, a very shaman, powerful shamantic energy about it. And when you transfer this to China, one of the reasons you cried so much is because it was an ancestral reunion for you. Those seven future generations that you wanted to be born with. So you're going to be successful there, but you have to understand you are bringing the shamanic practice that is going to be perceived as a master who is a teacher. Right. Okay. See it that way, a master who is a teacher and the practice that you begin at your home now, today, tomorrow, whatever, is going to greatly amplify what you do when you land there to go and make that manifest. And I have one more big question. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm just so like, wow, this all makes sense, right? You know, when everything starts vibrating and your soul's just yeah. so happy and you just <laughs> yeah. want to hug everybody and just like, ah, oh, thank you, you know. So um, uh, one incredible thing is that my um, I'm going to be a grandmother very soon. So uh, my daughter is pregnant and uh, my daughter and I have an incredible connection. And I, I love her with all my heart. She's my... I always say she's my biggest accomplishment. and um, So as the coming into being the the grandmother, of, and what's the, what is the one most, uh, what is the one thing or the potential things that I could do to help the next seven generations with the knowledge that I do have and knowledge to come? What's the one thing that I could do to make a difference that starts now in the learning, world? learning how to be the teacher, learning how to be the teacher. You are a living, breathing elder in wait right now, waiting for the students to step forward so you can show your eldership. Show how impeccable of a personality spiritually and physically you are to have a complete relationship side, a masculine side that is just as spiritual and just as protective of you of uh, you are of everyone else. To show those future generations how to live, love, breathe, learn, make make mistakes and learn from them. All of those things that the elders are supposed to teach the seven future generations. Be willing to write books. Be willing to make your truth authentic at all time. Learn what that impeccability of heart means when you stay in heart space in the most difficult of times. So you can relate those as stories to the seven future generations, whether they're in the womb now, in spirit, in, in the great sky nation, or physically manifest grandchildren next to you. Powerful. Powerful. Mm. Oh, wow. Why don't you Embrace just let the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Brace the teacher, exactly. Look up the word Sifu in Chinese. It means master. So it was what they use in the dojos. Oof. Allow that to mean something to you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it will be S I F U. You're the, you're the living, breathing elder right now. Why? Because you did the hard work. You lived the hard life and you survived and you're thriving now. You haven't been killed. You haven't been stuffed under the machine. You aren't in a government job that's wasting you away. You're not stuck in a hell realm with no ability to use your body. You won. Now it's time to teach everyone else how you won. <laughs> I just, I'm feeling so many things and I'm like, just. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to be I, grandma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said before, for I don't know how many days now of like um, preparing for this, of, you know, going into the, 
uh, having a sacred fire and having the, the sweat lodge and having all that prior to um, in in this space time with all of us so that my my questions would be um, meaningful and truthful and without ego and so that it could help many others in any way that that could be and one of the things that I said is you know help me not to keep saying wow (laughs) 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 and well so I haven't found a replacement word for that yet I'm still working on it Sometimes you just need those wow moments in your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it just seems to come with Andrew wherever he goes. <laughs> like, well, before before we wrap it up there, I want to ask you a question. How did you find about about me? Um it, that's interesting. Actually, it was with uh Laura Eisenhower and I just I heard your name. Mm-hmm. And then I asked um well, is this like the next uh, place for me for teaching? And I went upon my, my day, and then everything during that day was I stopped at the street of Andrew and something else, or I heard the uh, announcer say, well, and his name was Andrew, and it was like, okay, so I had all my <laughs> confirmations. <laughs> and then um, I found at the beginning I was so enthralled with, every word and I still am however at one point I had to learn that absorbing is one thing and doing is a whole complete other thing so to absorb it and then to actually put it into practice and to actually have the experiences is the actual teaching in itself rather than just the words is a good start but it's the actual stepping into it and allowing yourself those experiences without being afraid of making a mistake through it. Exactly. You you, you answered my question, and I want to give you another wow moment. Um, the city that you're in, I have a connection to there, to a, a young gentleman named Daniel Redtail Hawk. <laughs> wow. Very unique gentleman that came at a time where I was uh, running Wolf Spirit Radio at the time, running three separate radio shows, and he called in and he had this power of voice behind him that was connected to the spirit and the ancestors, and I nurtured that gentleman so he could go on and find his own voice, and uh, the ancestors are talking through you. Thank you. Wow. Whoa. Hey, yo. Thank you. And one, can I, can I ask just one really quick question? Sure. Just um, in regards to the bees. And it's just because, oh, actually two really quick questions. One is about the bees. Because um, uh, around the actual uh, longhouse and before I knew about what the bees actually meant, before the whole mystery school teachings, Um, I used to, or there's always been like 40, 50, 60 bees that would just lie there. Beautiful, big, Mm -hmm. fluffy bees. And everyone that would come um, to, into the longhouse, whether it was for ceremony or just a gathering or whatever the case may be, or kids, they would have to walk through this place that was with all these bees around and for many people they were very scared and very nervous about it Mm -hmm. and i didn't know um back then what i know now but at that point i was like no but they're they're okay they're just sort of like mm, sleeping and they're just all part of it with us and never once did anyone ever get harmed and nor did they even move they would just sit there they were the Dreamtime Guardians in the Physical Manifest. Okay. You make what? sure you make sure when you leave Canada, when you leave, that you take one of those bees with you. Find to find one that it's given its life, put it in a pouch and take it with you. Okay. All right, sister, we've got to let you go. This has been fabulous. Thank you. God right uh, bless you. everyone. Big hugs, okay? Thank you very much. Big hugs all the way around. Thank you for okay. coming. Okay.
Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Growth pattern. And when you were talking about the, the when we were talking about the shamanic side before, where you live in now has a, a very shaman, powerful shamanic energy about it. And when you transfer this to China, one of the reasons you cried so much is because it was an ancestral reunion for you. Those seven future generations that you wanted to be born with. So you're going to be successful there, but you have to understand you are bringing the shamanic practice that is going to be perceived as a master who is a teacher. Right. Okay. See it that way. A master who is a teacher and the practice that you begin at your home now, today, tomorrow, whatever, is going to greatly amplify what you do when you land there to go and make that manifest. And I have one more big question. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm just so like, wow, this so makes sense, right? You know, when everything starts vibrating and your soul's just yeah. so happy and you just <laughs> yeah. want to hug everybody and just like, ah, oh, thank you, you know. So um, uh, one incredible thing is that my um, I'm going to be a grandmother very soon. So uh, my daughter is pregnant and uh, my daughter and I have an incredible connection and I, I love her with all my heart. She's my... I always say she's my biggest accomplishment. and um, So as the coming into being the the grandmother, of, and what's the, what is the one most, uh, what is the one thing or the potential things that I could do to help the next seven generations with the knowledge that I do have and knowledge to come? What's the one thing that I could do to make a difference that starts now in the learning, world? learning how to be the teacher, learning how to be the teacher. You are a living, breathing elder in wait right now. Waiting for the students to step forward so you can show your eldership. Show how impeccable of a personality spiritually and physically you are to have a complete relationship side, a masculine side that is just as spiritual and just as protective of you of uh, you are of everyone else. To show those future generations how to live, love, breathe, learn, make make mistakes and learn from them. All of those things that the elders are supposed to teach the seven future generations. Be willing to write books. Be willing to make your truth authentic at all time. Learn what that impeccability of heart means when you stay in heart space in the most difficult of times. So you can relate those as stories to the seven future generations, whether they're in the womb now, in spirit, in, in the great sky nation, or physically manifest grandchildren next to you. Powerful. Mm. Oh, wow. Why don't you um, just let the teacher. The, yeah. <laughs> brace the teacher, exactly. Look up the word Sifu in Chinese. It means master. So it was what they use in the dojos. Oof. Allow that to mean something to you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it'll be S I F U. You're the, you're the living, breathing elder right now. Why? Because you did the hard work. You lived the hard life and you survived and you're thriving now. You haven't been killed. You haven't been stuffed under the machine. You aren't in a government job that's wasting you away. You're not stuck in a hell realm with no ability to use your body. You won. Now it's time to teach everyone else how you won. I just, I'm feeling so many things and I'm like, just. Yeah. And you're going to be I, grandma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said before, for I don't know how many days now of like, um, 
preparing for this of you know going into the uh, having a sacred fire and having the, the sweat lodge and having all that prior to um, in in this space time with all of us so that my my questions would be um, meaningful and truthful and without ego and so that it could help many others in any way that that could be and one of the things that I said is, you know, help me not to keep saying, wow. <laughs> and, and, well, so I haven't found a replacement word for that yet. I'm still working Sometimes. on it. <laughs> Sometimes you just need those wow moments in your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it just seems to come with Andrew wherever he goes. <laughs> like, well, before, before we wrap it up there, I want to ask you a question. How did you find about about me? Um, it, that's interesting. Actually, it was with uh, Laura Eisenhower, and I just I heard your name, mm -hmm. and then I asked, um, "Well, is this like the next uh, place for me for teaching?" And I went upon my my day, and then everything during that day was I stopped at the street of Andrew and something else, or. I heard the uh, announcer say, well, and his name was Andrew, and it was like, okay, so I had all my confirmations. <laughs> and then um, I found at the beginning, I was so enthralled with every word, and I still am. However, at one point, I had to learn that absorbing is one thing and doing is a whole complete other thing. So to absorb it and then to actually put it into practice and to actually have the experiences is the actual teaching in itself rather than just yep. the words is a good start but it's the actual stepping into it and allowing yourself those experiences without being afraid of making a mistake through it exactly you you, you answered my question and i want to give you another wow moment um, the city that you're in, I have a connection to there, to a, a young gentleman named Daniel Redtail Hawk. <laughs> wow. Very unique gentleman that came at a time where I was uh, running Wolf Spirit Radio at the time, running three separate radio shows. And he called in and he had this power of voice behind him that was connected to the spirit and the ancestors. And I nurtured that gentleman so he could go on and find his own voice. And uh, the ancestors are talking through you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Huh? Hey, yo. Thank you. And one, can I can I ask just one really quick question? Sure. Just um, in regards to the bees, and it's just because. Oh, actually, two really quick questions. One is about the bees, because. Um, uh, around the actual uh, longhouse and before I knew about what the bees actually meant before the whole mystery school teachings um, I used to or there's always been like 40, 50, 60 bees that would just lie there beautiful big mm -hmm. fluffy bees and everyone that would come um, to into the longhouse whether it was for ceremony or just a gathering or whatever the case may be or kids they would have to walk through this place that was with all these bees around and for many people they were very scared and very nervous about it mm -hmm. and i didn't know um back then what i know now but at that point i was like no but they're they're okay they're just sort of like mm, sleeping and they're just all part of it with us and never once did anyone ever get harmed and nor did they even move yep. they would just sit there they were the dream time guardians in the physical manifest okay you make when sure you make sure when you leave canada when you leave that you take one of those bees with you find to find one that's given its life Put it in a pouch and take it with you. All right, sister, we've got to let you go. This has been fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> God bless everyone. You.
big hugs, okay? Thank you very much. Big hugs all the way around. Thank you for okay. calling. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.